I, Bori Estore. Do swear that. Do swear. I'll speak the truth. That I'll speak the truth. The whole truth. The whole truth. And nothing but the truth. And nothing but the truth. So help me God. So help me God. Thank you. Good morning, Mr. Ture. Good morning, Sama. everyone. Isama, Mr. Ture. Good morning, Isama. Isama. Isama, alhamdulillah. Good morning, commissioners. And good morning, members of the TRRC. Isama, commissioner, Isama, TRRC, Nkolu. Thank you very much, Mr. Ture. I have the singular pleasure of welcoming my learned senior today before the commission. Thank you so much. Inumbara. We thank you for honoring our invitation at very okay. short notice. I'm grateful indeed. And I also have the unusual um, opportunity and privilege to guide Mr. Ture, who is my learned senior, in his testimony. I'm grateful indeed. Please make yourself comfortable. Okay, thank you so much. And during the course of your testimony, keep in mind that we have interpretations going on in the background. I'm grateful indeed. In your testimony today, we would like to hear about your experience as a magistrate you were a former magistrate just after the military government took over in 1994. Thank you very much, Mr. Ture. If you are ready to begin, we will start your testimony. I'm grateful indeed. Kindly provide your full name to the commission. My name is uh, Bori S. Ture. What is your address? The address is I live in Farato village. And what is your occupation? I'm a barrister and solicitor of the Supreme Court of the Gambia. And what is the name of your chambers? My chambers is called Crown Chambers. And where is it situated? It's situated in Banjul at the Johnson of New Primate Street and Boxbar Road. Mr. Ture, you are a very experienced and senior lawyer at the bar. Can you tell us um, how many years post call? Mr. Ture, I have 21 years post call at the Gambian Bar. I kindly give us a bit of your educational background. I have a background. I did my primary schooling in Sinchu Njabo Primary School. In the North Bank region. Sabah Sanjali District. Sabah Sanjal Bangkokang. I sat to the common entrance in 1982. 1982 Then I proceeded to Nusrat High School. Nusrat High School. I spent five years, 82, 87, in Nusrat. After writing to the O-Levels, I proceeded to St. Augustine's to do my sixth form. I completed my sixth form in 1989. I worked briefly as a teacher in Nusrat. For one academic year, 
Sanji Kilingo like a current role. And I also worked as a field officer in the Women's Bureau in the office of the president for a month. Na karikilin doko fanang ke musola office bala doko bunda la me yalongo. Wele kata banta la kaduko le kedin kira to kafla me ne field office and watu mo jebe president wala office wale koto. Then I proceeded to Fraby College, University of Sierra Leone. Not a four-year degree program to do a, LLB. Ntata Fraby College, me alonka be Sierra Leone. Ntata na LLB ke walto sanji nani? I did my bar in 1995. Nana ba karamo ke 1995 sanko no. That was my last exams in my life, and I failed that one. Wala muna londi konti bo labango tini na balu kono barude manga nye dembo itale. I came down home, I got appointed in the government public service as a magistrate, first class magistrate. I went to the magistrate court. Can you tell us what that means to be a first class magistrate? I first class magistrate. The magisterial bench was divided into three categories. You have the professionals who would be trained lawyers or who would have had their first degree, LLB. And then you have the second class magistrates. People who basically were retired and had a high degree of experience in the public service. And third class magistrates, these are ordinary lay people who can be mobilized and then appointed to handle matters. Nda sabanjango wale multi many alonko eh amanke ko ye karamba ke kalondi bal soto bari molemu menu la ko faraman sata isi ta yolu fanalu londi wo bunda to many alonko isi jube oke eh tilingu nin to nya sambola kito la karola. And then in 1998 I went back to Sierra to do my bar again for the second time. 1998, Mr. Sierra Mr. Ture, before you move on to Sierra Leone, I just wanted you to give us the difference between the roles of the first class, second class, and third class magistrates. Mr. Ture, I have a question about the first class, second class, and third class magistrates. I have a question about the first class, second class, and third class magistrates. I have a question about the first class, second class, and third class when you are a first class magistrate, you can exercise all the powers vested in the magisterial court system. Nimu first class, wale makama folo nyinti. Woto sembe wo sembe, nabe wo kiti bundala, iste si wo tamandino le ila duoko nyin sambola karola. And uh, in terms of the differences in their civil jurisdiction, first class magistrates can handle matters um, to the tune of one million dollars, claims up to the tune of one million dollars. Uh, between you, first class magistrate Palastio Lufanalu, Kito Lulanya, Aninko Lukafute Manyaming, is a Kito Lutano Le, Aninko Bonyoto, Maya Longo, Independence Bacon, Walla Kodiku Bacon, Mensita Hanfo, Dallas Million Killing, Italicio was Sarto Lutano Le. Second class up to a tune of seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Second class, all them load la flanja men sita hani for dollars uli tower ula nyong. And third class up to a tune of five hundred thousand dollars. Unda sabanja nying all them men ya longko isi kuta mandi no ning kolo la korole karole men sita hani for dollars uli talu ula nyong. And I must also add that in the whole of the Commonwealth, the jurisdiction of magistrates. Magistrate courts in the Gambia is the widest in the entire Commonwealth. Commonwealth tundo mu me obekang, kwa lulani ante la Gambia tala kono fano tabunda do lula taluti many alonko ebebe Commonwealth koto. Especially in terms of the exercise of criminal jurisdiction. Sako kwa lume nutilinta kuruia kwa lubonyo tola ni akito luta mando. Magistrates in this country can hear capital offences. Magistrate tola lume nube nyimbangko kang. Isi kitindiru kuntongkolu beta nole meni alonko wole mkukurungu kuntongkoti. 
And Mr. Ture, that would be the first class magistrate. Yes, in first particular. class magistrate. Yes. 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 Ha, first class magistrate. Ha, well, um, first class magistrate well, it, he, man, well, uh, follow in, Because That's they right. had the power and the jurisdiction to hear more complex and serious matters than the second and third I class. I do it all and law is silo dealer like Purka Kesi felt a many along with Koleatale. But just to be clear, um, during the time that you were appointed as a first class magistrate, you still had not sat to the bar. But Hanika be Purja Yesenadron, Kabri Yet Tombon Kek, first class magistrate, Hanika be email a bark follow. I did my bar in 1995. Nana bark in 1995, Samalekono. It was because of me failing my exams in 1995. Why? I had to come home to work on the bench in order to prepare myself. Wearing sitting of the bar. Wearing interrupting you. I just wanted to bring out the point that at that time there was no requirement for you to sit to the bar as it is the case now. Yes, you are perfectly right. Council Kai Watembo Amanke ni mukuti men kanin tapuruka e kulu uh tam and mensike londi contibuti bakaro la kosa in a benyami fratale. My apologies for interrupting. I'm grateful. Yeah. Then I like I indicated I did my bar in 1990. I, I went for my bar a second time in 1998. We were interrupted by the events in Sierra Leone because of the civil war. However, we completed the course and in 2000 I, I was enrolled at the Gambian bar. And, uh, I still continued service on the bench. Between Hanim Bin Continental Dokola, Bunda like Afdami, a bench while a menu Kitindrila Sila Lutije. And over the period, I had a couple of training on human rights because I was a member of Amnesty International. Between which Okono, not a current Londi Karam for some full assoto, a Maya Lonka, a Ben, a Denta, Hadamaya, Nyanta Kunya Lila, Katu Utumumbeka for Konoka for my Amnesty International. Gender was also part of my training. Musuninke, Tema Fatam Fansul, Fanaluda, Ben Karango Konole. We also did a course in Saria. And Londi Karango Fananke, Saria Kitindil Kunya Altole. That's my professional and academic background. In terms of your experience as a private legal practitioner, where would you say your expertise lies or what kind of cases would you normally involve yourself with? Let me also say this, all baristas in this country are general practitioners. Um, there is no one particular chamber that specializes in any one aspect of the law in this country. That's due mainly to the nature of the economy, small size of the population. But mm -hmm. my practice over the years got concentrated on criminal and civil matters, more especially land. Taking your career in chronological order, you started off as a magistrate, first class. Yes, that's true. I would like us to explore the order of judicial interference. 
mbela fla pour nga auto fofo senene do mande wala kiti bunda ni na nya da bulo men gaka ko ni do wato yobe je by the executive into your work as a magistrate and wo da bulo ni gaka bo da men do wala santon ko ldi man sakunda la karola ila do ko ni kono after you were first appointed as a magistrate where were you posted to briye tombon kuta ke ke kiti ndir la do malan ko ri ba fla men magistrate ye samba do ko la min dole as posted in banyul magistrate court mbe banyul magistrate court le nga folo jele At that time who was the chief justice? What were you malam kitindir la bena nyaton koti? The late chief justice Omar Al Ghali. Gala chief justice Omar Al Ghali. He was a Sierra Leonean by nationality. Ate mu Sierra Leone banku di moleti. Ah, may I apologize. Most uh, chief justice Omotion. Oh, chief justice Omotion. Omotion was a Nigerian. Omotion mo Nigerian moleti. Came here on technical assistance. Na ta jang nyin kam ma prime ma ko ro ta man di do ko la karol. Al Ghali came after him. Al Ghali bula ta atele noma. Okay, but generally in the question of interference, may I divide the Jame era into two phases? Re ni a jube man sala dabulo kito ni kitindir ko luto mbela fla ka tala ka ke fanna fulati mr tore before we just go there i just wanted to know some of the key players in the system like who the dpp was and who your principal magistrate at banjul was just so that we can get that context and background before we move on much obliged uh, principal jandim bi da wodo fla mbela fla ka lon fla jumal le mo molti men yalon ko wolle fam fam da ba ko nyin ko misal fe mbela fla ka lon jumal principal magistrate jumal mo non dpp di me yalon ko wol ka tara maralin ma sa kunda la kitindir la le nyaton ko la o sifal na nyongol mbela fla ka wole lon fla jandim bi da wodo the principal magistrate in banjul magistrate court was his was a magistrate onya His was it magistrate Onya wole mu kunton koti nu wo kitindirla silolu la karola He is a Nigerian by nationality and a man of distinguished birth and a very strong character Ate mu Nigeria banko dinguleti mole fana mu meya lonko ato bota adu molem meya lonko ala kolu ake bambandi bakele naba ata mandila Was he also here on technical assistance? Yes, he, was, he came along with uh, three of his colleagues. Atena akafunyulu mo sabale na tanyola. Magistrate Sadiq in Kanifing, he was the principal magistrate and Inyang was in Base. He was also a principal magistrate. They are all Nigerians. Magistrate Sadiq membe nun Kanifing and in magistrate Onyang wo benum Base bare telu be na taw silakilo le kan kitindro la karola banko kanjang. At the material time, I believe it was uh, the Attorney General was Mr. Marong. And what time was that? I'll go to my Attorney General, my late colleague, Mr. Marong. Not very sure about that, but I have a feeling that it was Mustafa Marong. Among who is my Baba Bakere Bari Nani Miro Soto Kutumo, a member of the Kafai named Mustafa Marong. This material time is what year? In some years, what is that? It was 1995. In 1995, some of the connotations. I believe. Um, Mr. Fafambai was the first Attorney General. Njikita, njikita, Mr. Fafambai atela mu Attorney General. Yes, that's right. How much on your day? Masa kunda falingo kera waro men. How much on your day? So was this after he had been removed? When you get a waro men, I atela bondi bang. I believe so. He didn't meet Mr. Fafambai in the office. Dema Mr. Fafambai tera office oto. Kindly tell us what your experience was at the at the Banjul Magistrates Court, working as a magistrate on the. principal magistrate onya silan afo nyemba wato me nayta mu kiti ndir lati me alon ko be do ko ki kam principal magistrate onya koto mu ne kete tela ko wolti men yalon ko yow lel karan a ko ni do do ko ni ko no je okay let me go back to the the two phases of division that i would categorize the jammi administration into man ngata nga o fanna fulo meme fo al hakatu ko nga jammi la mara ro wucce o ko lu tala nyami nga ke o fanna fulo men tin bar nga mu ruje kan Yes it's true there was interference with the judiciary to nyalem during the double ka ke ki bundal um era that is during the transition of two years wotumo sojar mararo be kerin wucce falingo be ke kan tumo men wo sanji fulo kono but it was far less in degree than what later came to pervade after he had transformed himself into civilian administration but what mo a common sia assembo fana mawara baba bake ko anata la ban nyamin biring ay sojaria bula ay faling anata ke civilian ngoti anata dum mararo kono wo tembole ko lu wajabita the government the executive then had very little interference with ordinary 
civil matters or ordinary criminal cases wotembo ko flo dula to tumo kunto ngonyi alama kan do yata bakele ko lu to men keta o kruya ko lu bo nyototi anin moni mote ma kitolu fanalu lanyato their focus mainly was on uh, matters involving senior security and police personnel security <coughs> army and police personnel who were arrested and detained and some of them and some of whom were being prosecuted wotembo ite lanyati linyati linta ko men wala mbirim falingu keta ye police kebalu men mutani sojar kebalu wala kantoni tankada bunda nyaton kolu men ye mutai be dolu kitindi kan wotumo ite lanyati linya keta wolela ko woltinu wotumo so first degree my first experience in terms of interference was when the case of inspector general of police versus pasala jain ibrahim chongan and keba diba was assigned to my office e amunta ntela londi folo kolu tamandi nyato dabulo la karo la kitoto woketa watol ti bring kito futatamma inspector general of police pasala jain ani ibrahim chongan Uh, bruo lakko nata kafutamma and keba diba and keba diba and mr tura just to give us some background before we go into that particular case give us yes. the context um, especially with the passing of some of the military decrees at that time what the effect of those decrees were on the laws of this country especially the constitution before we go into the facts of that particular case kenim bitaw ko nyim be la nyaro say mbela fa ya fo nyi jani kabri tata fo nyi bunda luwa bundi ga fo decree mo go decree nyi anata na mun kolya kulel sabu ko nyi ngono jani be constitution nyi londila when the armed forces provisional ruling council was being created biribe afprc la wo council bunda londila armed forces provisional ruling council they promulgated decree number 1 ye sarti folo dada e ka fo me degree number 1 and that is the armed forces provisional ruling council establishment decree wolem sarto ti me ye armed forces provisional ruling council la sarto wole wo bunda fa ngolondi Sorry sorry may I apologize the first decree okay. was the constitution of the republic of the gambia suspension and modification decree number 1 al hakatu filo keta je decree folo folo nyin wala mi banko la sambaran sarti bukuba nyin ne fongla kolu folo fali ngui ka folo constitution o anin itele lafta kolu menu tamandi la je by this decree they suspended the whole of chapter 4 bitu decree ya samma aya sabu constitutional la sappanani njangu mume o be chapter 4 yo be denne and this is where you have the entrenched uh, and protected rights uh, conferred by the constitution fundamental human rights adum mo lemu bundati may hadama ya nyanto lu be londi ke bambandi may ya lonko wole ka hadama dingu lu kanta ila balwo kono amunta etaliyo bunda ni mume o be le den folo So the junta gave itself power to arrest detain anybody for any length of time junta ni ngolem sojar marabunda ye sembo di ifangolula itali lafita momondi marala wala lafita momondi mutala isi muta ye sindi fo janni wati men diate to le nyaw nyandi nyama and also they arrogated them to them arrogated to themselves the whole of corpus of the executive and the legislative power of the nation bankola sembo kabrim mararola karola fokunton ko fanan sembo la karola anin e kata bo kitol fanalu lanya bunda tukungu la karola yo sembo be chika ya di fangulula and mr tori sorry so, just so that we can understand before we move on mm -hmm. so all of those janni betenten na protective safeguards that were in place during the criminal justice system for accused persons were no longer available Amunta. to them at this time amunta pour mo tumiri mo o maya lonko tumiri mo lam pour ka même loi men nyanna ka tangandi ka ka tangandi yol be wol be mu kulle men lonko wol be man taw tumiri mo ko tange yol be bondi gele ko tange yes that is right you can no longer as a lawyer go to court and then uh, file an application for the release of your client who perhaps has been arrested and detained ha o muto nyalti ni mu loyati o tembo fa ngay titano la kiti bundala pour kata safero ki je pour ni mo mutare ngobi je meme muita la kliano ti pour isi o bula nyaming o tembo loya ma o sembo soto the stage was set the stage was set for imposition of dictatorship from the very beginning amunta o tumo lem yelondiro ke kasulo dundi sartolula me yalon ko 
wolle be tajireya aning sembela mararo londila nyim banko kan so there was no right to liberty per se the no. right to bail and Munta. the 72 hour time limit amunta wa wa to not applicable wala nyinti ko hanama de mo mam nyanto soro fay nyanto soro fay e pour ka fan soro andung e pour bail fanangu nak karolo fana na na koleya mo ko nyin kono that's absolutely right all notions of rights and freedoms were suspended umuto nyalte bitu molla taram fambulo fan sambo aning ila kolu kenya am fayo yowlu be ka fu nyomale wutu mo ye deng asem bote mola and what did that um what what effects did that have on the rights of accused persons especially if you try to juxtapose that with the case of IGP and Pasala Jeng and others so mo nata namu kole ya kulle sabu wom to mir molla misal fe surtu ni nata na saundi ya na misal di IGP Pasala Pasala Jeng ana do nyol la kesi nyinto may i give a bit of a background history here but not tarik sutun di jang kolu lanya o tembo please go ahead before the case file was assigned to me there was a lot of a uh, battle between the defense team and the prosecution team for the bail of the accused persons janin kito fonga be di lantela nyo sababale tartaje nung kitindir lalu anin loya do lu tema men be lori ngi muta moli e akete tema nyo sabale ti nung karanin kara tema janin kito nyimbe ci kala kadin tela and the trial magistrate magistrate onya who had conduct of the matter ruled in favor of the prosecution denying the accused persons right to bail magistrate onya meya lon ko ko be lari ngatela bulu nun ay ni sembo tamandi je ka balang pour ka nyim molu bel menu be lo loyal men be lori nyim molu nun amonta ayolu korindi jele amanson pour nyim molu han kel ye bel ikono and was that person want to decree number 1 for asuki no, that was not person want to one, decree number 1 but follow up order follow up decrees wo amanke ko be dendin dikri folo nyin la de barbitum dikri dolu fanalu nata fintile men ya lonko wolio dinkira bambandi in particular sako membe ko you have state security detention of armed and police personnel decree 1994 that's number decree number 3 sako sarti sabanja o men inata a fintindi 1994 men tilinta molu muto la menu be kantonin tankada bunda do ko la wolem police ul men ko menu be security ul karola and i believe this particular decree affected these particular accused persons because they were military personnel ra so munta munta fere ko nyin decree ni kay men decree men ko mo foten anar na nyin tumi mol nyin batandi bagal me yalon ko tanko bunda molla and their names were specifically i believe gazetted in the decree and we told ni na rene tol ni kuson son ni lay gazeto ni ndoka korosi that's quite right pasala was from the armed forces he was later um, um, appointed as inspector general of police umuto nyalti pasala atabota kanto ni tankada bunda la dum ko ko la in attack inspector general of police la ibrahim changan was a zandamari officer and keba diba as well ibrahim changan atanin keba diba it will be be zandam bunda la nun do ko la utumo they were later transferred to the police when the zandamari was being dismantled in at so on the kenaiti police bring ibe zandam bunda nyin janjan natumo men so legally speaking magistrate onya was right on the law as it was ne bi aju be woto magistrate onya abe tilindine nun de loi be lari nun nyamin wo tembola in refusing to grant them bail pour ka balang ni molo pour ke bail uh, there was an application before the then supreme court which is now the high court for bail wo tumo safero ketalu nun de supreme court membe keri nun wo tumo sai ngolam high court ti pour bail ko la carola and the supreme court also upheld the position of the magistrate that he doesn't have jurisdiction to grant bail adu bitum wo kiti bunda santon ko nata ni londi magistrate law kango kang ko aman sembo soto pour ka bail di ni molula so it was after all that skirmishes during wo du nyoto lu be botala lomu and after the transfer of magistrate onya from banjul magistrate court to kanifi magistrate court and we nata magistrate onya sawundi ka bondi banjul magistrate court ka samba kanifi magistrate court because the state had intractable difficulty kat wotu mo bang man sakunda e kolea ko taki in getting decisions from his court going in in their favor buruka kangulu soto atela kiti bunda la kangulu men ya lonko wolle man sa nyaton ko man sakunda fasa nu wotu mo um they had to 
re-engage um, one lady by the name of Mrs. Scott, wife of former Liberian ambassador to the Gambia. In a tamola makoero nyining Mrs. Scott maya longko in a tati dundi kolo kono aluo tumo Liberia banko la ambassador meme nyim banko kangole la muso mo marioti. Mrs. Scott came here on technical assistance as a magistrate from Nigeria, and her name maiden name was Miss Ogojafo. Um, at the end of her term, she decided to stay on contract. And along the line, she got married to the, Nigeria, the Liberian ambassador. And the Bar Association petitioned the executive that um, you cannot be a spouse of um, a head of mission designated to the country in question and you'll be allowed to function in the public service of that country. At that point, can you remember who the president of the bar was? I, I did not join the legal system then. I was in the university. But it must have been between Surahata Jane and Usain O.N.M. Dabo. So following this petition, uh, Mrs. Scott was obliged to resign her position as magistrate. Um, the Liberian ambassador became the dean of the diplomatic corps, and because of that, she had close personal interaction with the former first lady Tutifal. I must also add that Mrs. Scott was a very highly vindictive person. She had a lot of difficulties uh, with members of the private bar. So she got to the file to convince Jame that if she was reappointed as a magistrate on the bench, there would be difference in Banjul Magistrate's Court. The state was going to get convictions in its favor. Bari Anata Kata Aferoke Hanufo. I reappointed her as principal magistrate between sojar bunda nata sai kanta aketa magistrate kunton koti principal magistrate and forcibly transferred onya from banjul to kanifing and she was to take charge over all the sensitive um, case files that onya was handling at the material time bitu watembo nata onya force to saundi ka bondi banjul ka samba kanifing kiti bundala bitu ate men ate ogo jafo me ya nati je bitu silango tumo lenga bulo nata la failo lu ni nkito lukang meni alonko magistrate onya bewo le tamandi kanum bitu ngate nata si wole kuna and would you agree mr ture that that political appointment was a direct interference in the judicial certainly it was it was 
la ke dabula kiti mundal do mo kula me yalon ko bantam bilu katra e wotonu o wato lan ha wo mo kula ti wo mo bantam bilu le fangoti ka o katenati ka adundinan kiti bu clearly a violation of the geneva convention on diplomatic privileges and immunities adu wo fango ay sarta do le tinya sarto me yalon ko dunia be kambenta wole la bunda bala ye melondi nun geneva switzerland banko kay ka fole ye geneva conventions nyin sarto be lorin wole to bari amunta ite late tombongo woyo sarto tinyale so when she came there were so many files irana ta file jamal le bije nu ngotumo Mr. Ture, I just wanted us to just go a little bit back and tell us what the source of this information um, was, the information about uh, how she became politically appointed. Mr. Ture, I want to ask you a question. 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 Um, at that time, I was not very much connected to the establishment. But Magistrate Onya, who was with me in Banyan Magistrate Court, as the principal. But Magistrate Onya, ni member nyo balanung Banyan Magistrate Court ko ate mukitin dila nyatong koleti. Had a very close relationship with the Nigeria High Commission and with the Ministry of Justice. Ay choki nyo la sutun na soto anin Nigeria la High Commission tema. Aning banjul maji aning minto the attorney general the attorney general la office oning so news that Mrs Ogojafo was going to be appointed as a magistrate kafuko kibaro me ya itani ko Mrs Ogojafo ba tumbon na le kake magistrate reach us well in advance of government taking a decision on that wofuta tan tolo majuna le hani jani mansa kunda ba fang ako oning kela and how it was all generated uh, we also got the information atamata nyamen akolu lata nyamen ngawoki barolu besoto otumole hani janna be kela yes thank you very much for that explanation kind of baraba gelo sadaro tenten so she then became seized of all these files and then for some personal reasons and that's by virtue of some relationship between herself and the former inspector general of police pasala jang bitung anata ke moti mem marata o failo lu bela anin kolu men ya lonka yetaraji bar bitung fanan kolu la nya anata ke nyinti ko anin mo la kolu takita nyola me ya lonko wala keta moti ka fo menum pasala jang who was accused number 1 in this particular case she had moral difficulty handling that file in particular and that was how the file was assigned to me to deal with it but the government itself at the time was not aware of that decision bari wo tembo man sakunda fango mambo wo kango kala ma wo betala tu mo men so when i was assigned the file i went through it i came to discover that there were 52 adjournments on record bring a file on nyinta ndun ta ko no ngala kolu kesemeti ndata tara ko sinya talulu ni mfula ika kito ni mama ndi ka den and on all those occasions it was only on one day that a real trial started that was when pw1 first prosecution witness was invited to commence his testimony aduo kito to sinya talulu ni fulo be ka kito den sinya kilinamu ye ko nyin kito fango diamu andu wo lumulem lunti meya lonko se de folo nyin nata finti ka diamu ak ko nyin kono and what was the reason for all the other 51 adjournments so i'm going to dalilo bakan ka sabu meya sabu fo nyin lung tallu ni fulo be ka lungol ni sawni sawni fa fura ta foto mo na dalilo di there were many factors one was applications relating to bail adjournments arguments that was part of it ku jamaale be dendi ngala bare be tum bel kolu kito la dengo kenya lo an india molu be dendi ngala wolu be be ko nyin kono le wotumo but nothing of substance happened nothing of substance para manke ku kumati so i then issued notices and gave a date for matter to be mentioned in court be tum wotumo le nata molu kala mutandi roke ani ngakango di fanan lumen akobe fola kitibunda nyina 
notices were served on both sides na kala mutandiro samba karaful lubela and then uh, we converge and we took a fix here in date mbenta bitu tumole na takambe nga lumuta lumbe mbekela akwo lumo diamoti Now, on this day in question uh, the state did not produce a witness bitu lumo menga ta onya lumen komba ko diamula eh bitu man sakunda man dan sede fintindi membelo la ko ko can you tell us who the prosecutor in that case was we saw one nyo case nindo jumal tar jumal mu kiti ndir lati man sakunda la karola Uh, he was Lamin AMS Jobate. He was then the assistant superintendent of police in Wot charge of prosecutions. Wotumo Lamin Jobate le mu kitendir lati. Wotumo atelefona mu assistant superintendent of police la Karola amunda akonye ndunta atel bloko no wotumo. Is this the same Lamin Jobate that appeared here on the TRRC previous Ate, minister yes, of justice? Yes. Wotumo yes. Lamin Jobate kilingo le mbam menna ta nyisira nyat nyisira kanje be damu TRRC nyati ono nyong komando ba. He was a lawyer who was on second mind in the police force and he was in charge of all prosecution matters atelamu loyati ye menna do ko samba police la carola ndum kitindirolu be nyan natata atel la carola so when we converge to hear the matter the state did not produce a witness birim benta pour ka ko wonin diamu mansa mansa bun kunda manna sede fintindi and um, we ask him what was the reason why they were not proceeding with the matter na nyinin ka muna na itel mantara tenten kan ko nyinna and we are not satisfied um, with the reasons that were advanced adu itel nata dalilo lu men fontel ye wol manke dalilati meyentel nyaafa because majority of the witnesses were um, police officers working within the establishment kadu mo jama membe itel law sedo lu kono menu fo wol be mo police wol leti men be do ko la bunda nyim fangoto and most of them were in fact uh, at the material time at the police headquarters in banjul alu tembo fango wolu jama bebe kono ibebe do ko la banyunu police korda ba nyim fangale to otumo so it was like taking the court to ransom mun da wolam nyinti do rong ka kiti bunda kango dete dalila kan because there was no justifiable excuse so So what position did you take at that point? The, the defense lawyers made an application for me to dismiss the case. Bitu menu lawyer lu men be loring ate muta moñi ye wol nata ñi safero ke pro na kito ñi mbay nga fintinde be kito bunda kono ka buruka. I can remember they were Miss Drame. Makilo bakang wutumo Miss Drame Davije. Usman Silla. Usman Silla. And the late Pap Chasin Seka. And in Tala Pap Chasin Seka. And by Miss Drame you refer to Ida Drame. Yes. Uh, Miss Drame wole Madam Ida Drame ti wutumo. So by the time Mr. Jobati realized that um, something momentous was taking place in court. It was almost late. Watu me Mr. Jobati bina jela ko he ku kuma bale pareta kala kiti bundala bar wutumo atela karola tarde tale. So they thought I was going to adjourn the matter again for ruling I insisted that I was going to deliver the ruling the same day Itele nyina mutalun ko mbe lundole mutala kota ke lumme mbe kito nyin tela bari mfanal lota nyina kanko wo lumu fangole mte be kito nyin kala kate So I went into my chambers whilst I was writing my ruling Ntata na officer kono mbe na kangolu safe kango tumo mbe kango mentala whole truck load of soldiers were deployed in Banyul Magistrates Court. Ye moto fa mu mewole nati je wolunga be mu soja rolti ye nati Banyul Magistrates Court. It was like a military camp. Amonda wolun je bele ko soja campo. Some of them in fact entered right inside the courtroom under the roof of the court. Jama fa ngo soton ta menu dunta nan kiti bunda fa ngo nyim kono. And were they armed? They were all armed. Even in Jorangol lem. All of them were armed. Even in Kidol lem. They were not in fact with riot gear. They came heavily armed. In ngi balambaya Jorangol manna de. Misal kama ningere wol keta wala balambaya ke fankanta Jorangol men ni wol manna. Ke ning Kidol le nata. When they came combat ready. In atale ko molu menu pareta ke lo. It's like if you are deploying them to the battlefield. Amonda in atale ko menu pareta tala ke le wulo kono. So when I entered the courtroom with my ruling I asked all the soldiers to go out. 
bidun tan nata dum kiti bundala ninna o sarto lumen no ngesa fe ngo sojaro lu be finti banta they had no choice they had to leave the court from ah imam fere do soto dey finti ta kiti bundala and i must also add that um, um these three gentlemen went through a great deal of trauma mbenyum fanam fala ko nyi mo sabolu e dun takku ko le mballe ko no because i observed for long when they used to escort them to court kadu nga korosi wati jang wato men e ke dan dan nan ke nati kiti bundala under the roof of the court kiti bunda nyim fango kono bu ngo fango kono wherever they are seated the soldiers will be standing pointing the nozzle of the gun against each one of them kato hanni nyi molu be sirin dawda sojarol kay bayndi nan ka loyi kunto kiti bundala andu ngab kadang lo kunto la de e ka kidole fango dati li nyi molu lay be sirin dame but when the matter was assigned to me that was the first thing i said i wasn't going to countenance biri ya ko sawndi nte ka ngolem ku floti ngontete menjela malla fi wala mr ture that um position taken by the military or by the government in sending armed soldiers to the court was in effect an attempt to intimidate you woto sa ture o masa kunda warno sojar kunda do yo baro menketen pour ina je ka sojaro ki na je nin ki dolu ina ki di bunda do o mu kula dum yalon ko ina tala pour ke defa nan ke silandi yes that was part of it but also there was a security aspect of it because they were afraid that i was going to release them ha wo da bi jele on that day wo da bi jele de bari kanto la karado fanan da bi je wala min di koy sobe dako asi keno nte nga nyim molu bula wolum fango ke bula ye ye fan soto and members of the family who were there too were prepared if i was to discharge them certainly there was going to be a big showdown between them and the security adun we are just fed up nyim molu fanan la badi ngolu bi je ila di mbalu bi je andu wolum e be pareri ngol fanan be pareri nyina la ni ye bula abe kelamba mambale tinu nje wolum ka to mo molu fasita e fasita ko la fere ngotu mo were you intimidated that yes ila ndila baita fa ngundo far from it ah wa jam fata wala i i drove them out of the court room and then i proceeded to deliver my role ye bay ke finti ndi kiti bunda ko nalu nata tenten tan ak ngo menta nga wala kan fanam banke je wolu mr ture i'm very interested to know why you were not intimidating under such circumstances i think any reasonable person would have been can you tell us from where you drew such courage and boldness well mr ture a fonyeng mune ketal da lilo tinu meye te ju so bambandi aye ha nyindi pour ko ko tamandi o nyama wolu katu ni mo mondi ndolu abe kele ki jatewo leti fang ci silang e wo molu wo joranti wolu la naaje kamma i think is mainly because of my nature na mira follow 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 ndanya wala mo ku floti nsi ofo i hail from a very difficult father is it's not somebody anybody can easily intimidate nde fama mu moleti me yalon ko ke ko le mbale mu adum pour ka silandi e wo mu kuleti me yalon ko bo bo kana mama ndi fang mo bo ka silandi no i remember the day i was appointed i came home with my appointment letter i showed him lumen hakilo ba ka yen tombon ka nyindo ko dinna mbese la so ko no tumo menna ninna letero nata nyola le tembondir letero me ya dinna nata am futata ma he asked me to sit down akonye si nsita said this your work is different from every other type of work in the public service akonye tela nyindo ko nindo ko dolu be fatata le mansa kunda do ko bundala told me said for every case you preside over here akonye isita kiti wo kiti kunna jang god the almighty is going to preside over the same case to account for your the righteousness or otherwise of your decisions hereafter sinyil lonko man satalla allah subhanahu wa taala itebe kito tamandila nyaming ate man satalla fanambe ebo kito tamandila wole nyama woto si haklo tu tuku muluto ni be kito nyinkela So he told me don't ever be afraid of anybody in the system do what is right. Akonye woto kana sila mo womondina ni bundala ni ndoku bundala karola. Mentilin tabula wono ma doro yeto nya tamani. But quite apart from that also I was in Sierra Leone and I've seen war uh, from uh, another dimension. adun hana manke o damanti mbenun sere lion nyinkelo damu tata nyala jele nga kelo sede ya nyaya je kelo fanang na kolu kole ata nyaming 
It's diff much more difficult to deal with the police than to deal with the army, if only you understand that psychology. A koleata puru inim police o liye kudu nyote ma. Wale koleata inim sojaro o liye kudu nyote ma. Natara, ye la kolu tanya ning, ila kolu lanya fanan koto long. So I delivered my ruling and then I made an order that the accused persons be remanded in custody because that was an earlier decision by a previous magistrate and the High Court has affirmed that. I couldn't overturn the decision of the High Court as far as their release was concerned. Barbiringa kuota ngani inkele kwe bula barbitum ibe tulamu riman le follow ko kiti bunda melu follow tante nyaje ko liyas arto landi nyaming yo adumu bunda le tante tme na kango bundi nola wala kela kango baino wala nante fana ya landi wanya ko ituliya landi nyaming. What was your ruling? I dismissed the case and then uh, remanded, made an order for the accused persons to be remanded because at that time they were security detainees under the. Um, decrees that they have enacted and the detention orders. What I'm going to say is that I'm going to say 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 that I'm no, legally, ugly as it was, there was a basis for their further detention under the dispensation that was prevailing at the time. Nielu a ni na la ni ajube watu mo sarto lube kiri nu nyaming fereti je foyo kanga tapuri ya sambari man wamu kwa lula ni aleti wajamano. Because these three gentlemen were already detained under the security, the the decree number three. The state security detention of armed and police personnel decree. We are talking about Sarto La Bunda Sabanja Ome Italia Londi decree number three. It will be only the motto called Nung Meya Longko. We are in Kangoli di Kabrim Police for Soja Rolu. Muta Molu Meya Longko be Muta La Olu Kono. We will better La O Sarto La Kono Nung. I don't necessarily agree with the contents of the decree as it was. The fact that Mansong decree in Kuala Lumpur was not a Mansong is a matter. And I also do not share the opinion that I do not have power to release them. I do not have the power to release them. I do not have the power to release them. I do not have the power to release them. I do not have the power to release them. I do not have the power to release them. In later cases, people were arrested under the same law and detention. Their names were published uh, under detention orders. And I went ahead to grant them bail. My yeah. only difficulty was a procedural one. The issue came before the court and it was determined. There was an appeal against it and the High Court affirmed the decision of the lower court. If that procedure had not um, been followed, I, I was definitely going to release them. <laughs> Uitelau kito kola kiti dolo menu nata meni alonka kita fasongo nyongo leti wamo lulu ninge la kuabu nyoto nte kebu lale yobari watembo uitelau kuo mwaire atelau mkufolo nyinti watu mo uitelau wao kanto ni watanga da bun bunda la kanga mengoto wala na mebula bari akola kiti kotengo lulu menu nata je anyongo lulu ninge ulu kito lulu kente kebu lale and what decision had the magistrate court made that the high court had affirmed? Can you, the magistrate court, more than Kiti Bundan, no, I'm can you malata me along with Kiti Bumba for them blood or sir can kill one another. The magistrate court has declined jurisdiction on the basis of the fact that they were arrested and detained under decree number three, and their names were published as persons who were a security threat to the nation. And because of that, the court declined jurisdiction to say that they cannot be granted bail. And that was the decision that was affirmed by the High Court that could not be released under any circumstance. Kiti bunda ba yeng High Court ya kangu men lundi ya kiti bunda du mangko la kangu men lundi wole nyinti ko nyimmo lu dikri number three imutata o kangu le koto andu wole nyinti ko umo lu meme imutata o kangu koto ite bula nola yo bitungo dali lole ya sabu brintel fananga kwa nyima. Ntata ngajibe kwa hiri wa sarto lebe lori iteli ole loni ole mdikiri nomba triti. So wadali ulele ya sabu imebu la noe kuola ata wole nyama. So as a lower court you could not substantially overturn the decision of a superior court? That was the only reason I couldn't overturn the decision of the high court. But if the matter had not gone before the high court and if it was not 
an issue that was argued and determined by the trial magistrate, I was definitely going to release them. Eh, kwenye mbe ole nyama, katuniaje eh, kitibunda sonta kitibunda ndingu la kangola, amunta kuolu la nyale ya sabu, bari na atara amanke woti nungu, tombi ntebe ngela kitu oke nyu nyami, tombi mbe bulalale, bari watumo kitibunda doye, kitibunda doye nyi mfongo la kangola ndi, kwenye nyanta tama la wole la wole yo sabu. I would like to pose a question for academic debate. The yes. decrees that were passed. Yes. They were auditory legislation at the time. Oh, what all the law and all the care in the world? Come again. The decrees that were passed was ordinary legislation. It was ordinary law. They were below the constitution. They did not have constitutional force. I know that the decrees are now part of the constitution. But at that time they were not. Was it constitutional that they were used to suspend provisions of the constitution at that time? Could they have been legally challenged? Um, I don't think they could have been legally challenged at that time because the only forum where such a challenge could have been raised would have been in the Supreme Court. If I mean the Supreme Court, I mean the last and the third tier. Let me clarify this. We used to have a Supreme Court, but it was just by name. That Supreme Court was the High Court. We had the Supreme Court and the Court of Appeal. The Supreme Court Sotom, but in Kiti Sankambunda Falanso the Court of Appeal. The Gambia's last court then was the Privy Council. Gambia la Kiti Bunda Labango Tembo Kafujele Privy Council. The only place where that issue could have been ventilated would have been past the Privy Council. Wokoni Mosa Avunak Abonyoto Daming Kajabakese Woto Wale Woto Wotobekela Privy Council let no tumo. But going to the Supreme Court was certainly very expensive. But the Supreme Court or Tembo Wobekela Kukolem Ultin Wotumu Adaba Abakoleala. The Court of Appeal at the time uh, exercise jurisdiction on constitutional matters. But um, this was not in relation to matters pertaining to legality of legislations vis-a-vis -vis the constitution. The, the reality we were faced with was that uh, we only had a constitution just in skeletal form because the most vital parts of the constitution were suspended. And the status of each and every decree was that in so far as it is inconsistent with any provision of the constitution, the decrees will prevail and override the constitution. Nani constitution wale mluwa sarti buku ba banko kata anu mena. Nani wala sarti wale benta dao da. Constitution wale njina kuwa wale mbanko la sarti buku wanyi ka wale kuwa lulandile. Dikri njina kuwa wale ka wale tamandi ka lo wale la. The decrees were not lawful if you ask me. They were not lawful but it was that order that gripped the nation and country was being ruled under that. But we took a Precisely, I just wanted to agree with you there because that was the question I was posing to you. Because the constitution at the time was the supreme law of the land. You could not have had lesser legislation which attempted to suspend its provision. So it was clearly unlawful and it could have been legally challenged, provided obviously that the right circumstances were available which they were not you are perfectly right amunta council kam nyin ka jam wala nyin tiko nakum nyin ka ro fon ko to mo leti yemen jabi ten ka to tembo wo dikri wolu 
banko la loi sartu buko nyeng asi balanno le o decreto la wala ka ka ke ka ke bay barbi to wari en anata findi ko decreto lo tembo sembo di ta wolle la ka tambi banko la constitution of fond la lotan kangalu la wo dalilo le asabu but the scenario we are faced with is that the son becoming much older than the father amunda nga nyati limme nanu wotumo dimole nata siya fati so decrees were they couldn't have in the normal setting by any stretch of imagination uh, they couldn't override the provisions of the constitution but that, that is the whole idea of a military government barine ajube o decree olu wolu malodu la wolodu la soto sembe du la tela taran du la tela niani na constitution o la barbitun kol nata la nyaming amunda menu be siring menu be mararo bundala wolu yon wol na nata o decree olu fisian di ke sembe ntu ya ke tambindi banko la constitution o la lotan kangulu la Thank you very much for that. Thank you. Thank you. And then um, do you know what eventually happened to them? They were um, escorted to my two prisons and that was the end of the case. Ye dandang ye samba my two kasola. Ko nyen dandula ke tawleti. And then um, uh, I think it was the same day I was sacked as a magistrate. Na mera ate olun kilum lam fana yenta bay kam bondina place to ko magistrate the following day I got my letter a somo lam yenna letter o dinna I was dismissed and the dismissal was um um from the office of the, from the personal management office PMO andu yem bay biri letter o nyinna tinye akata ko kayto nyin abota do ku bundale la mem marta banko do ku lalu bele ka fujele personal management office wala PMO and all it stated is that uh, we have been directed to dismiss you from the service of the Gambia government. Adun kango membe safari nje, wale mnyintiko, ye kango le di itolu fanana, puri yente bayi na doko to kabo Gambia mansa kunda doko bundala. So I had to write a petition. Itu nata kaito safari wale mnyama, memu kolu sainkang ulindi kaito oti. I address it to the head of the junta and that's the chairman yeah jamie nga letter o men sa fewo nya nga ki junta sojar bunda la kunton kole wotumo wolem ya jamme fangoti can you tell us why you wrote directly to the head of the junta instead of addressing your concerns to pmo ne asabu fo isa fo no nya dali lo me asabu yele taro nyi sa fandu ya ki me wolem juntan kolla juntan la nyaaton goti ni ma ki me mola me along ko wolem marling gambe massa kunda do gulal be la nyaaton ko ma ki we now, the following morning uh, the following day in the morning i i was called to say that i had a letter so i went to the high court uh, and that was where i received my letter aso mo lem yen kumandi ko nga letter o sotole bitu ndata high court o tembo lem letter o dinna i then went to the master and the master said let's go to the chief justice so ndata master ya master ko ngata chief justice ya but by this time it was uh, Omar Al Ghali who was the chief justice. Para watembo Omar Al Ghali atelom chief justice tinu watembo. He was the one who said uh, what happened is not right you know but um, there was so much fear in him. Bari atele nyum fanyen ko menketa anin silo manta amanke kutilindi wuti. Bari nak memba ko no tumo ate fanambe silandi ne wotumo. So he asked me to write a petition he told the master of the high court then Usman Jamme he said uh, he asked me to write a petition and give it to the master so that he can look at it uh, to vet it before we forward it to the office of the president he expressly said i should write a letter to the, the to the office of the president because as far as they were concerned judicial service commission was not involved in it at all kato ate mr algali atele nata nyin kan fo nyepur nga letter o safe me ya lon ko wala mun te fanana kumala nyati li nya letter o ti petition kon sia safe yo barbito ko ninga safe en sa di mastala mem marta kito bundala o tumo ka fayna usman jamme ni o letter o nyin jibe aya yirka o tumo isina tentendi ka ki president la office o can you tell us how you were appointed sa fo no nya yeta do ko la nyadi I was appointed by the Judicial Service Commission, not the PMO. PMO mandate ado ko la Judicial Service Commission wolem kitindir bundala kafu sembe ma baati bunda ba nyin wolle ente tado ko la. PMO has no authority over my service. PMO man ka wo kan sotontela do ko la karola wotum. In fact, 
act of PMO even directing that letter to me is also unconstitutional. And when the PMO is the letter of 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 the so, like he advised, he said, I should try, write a petition. I prepared a petition. I brought it to the master, Osman. When he looked at it, the very first paragraph, he laughed. Why did I letter of the 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 letter he, he told me, don't you realize we are dealing with a military government? I said, but if you ask me to write, I'm just expressing my mind. Akonye mfeta malonko ini soja rima nsa kundale beti lindi nyo ala teng. Nka ya haa mambala wala bari nitefa na nkuo mbembe nso ndo mokono. Nka wale finti ndi teng. Sorry, Mr. Ture, can you just give us um, the contents of the letter, so, yeah. in summary? Letter on your car, sutiyan didon, face off on your kumaka wale mbembe nsa peta akono ba. Would you have a copy of it available? Letter on your copy of it available? I don't have it here now. I passed by my office this morning because after the change of government in 2016, I filed an action against the government to get a constitutional declaration that the dismissal and the subsequent termination, because I was dismissed, and then thereafter later in 2000, I was also terminated, were unconstitutional. So I went to the office to try to access the file so I was to bring a copy along, but I couldn't see it. But I would get it to, I get it for the TRRC later. You saw man that time between the officer and the police, in Kamala, and see Kaimbo lo sila kaito lo kang maya alonko. Nde fango brimman sa kunda falinta nun 2016 nata savero kile kaito ndi kolo menu tamata ntela karola menu ni silo manta nyola menu ni sarto manta nyola munda ngasama niro ke ukwatole yo bari bitun left ambulo la la nuo kaito le kamfansi file oni nzoto ba brimna tana na officer oto ngakata nyonya ndi mang ambulo man la nuo kaito lo kang bari mbaka kata langa na afere kenga o kaito lo fundi TRRC ma nyatondo. Were you able to find your appointment letter or your termination letter? Ile ingbari letter oni wa. Yes, that's what I am saying. I have them in my case file, personal case file, that in the action that I instituted against the government. I'll make copies available to the commission. I'm bole for canting. I be be na o file o le kono na file ba ying. Yo bari mbe fere kela le mbulo ela o kaito lukang nge sa inka yelema nga fere ke hanfo ya futa TRRC ma. And just out of interest, how did the the institution of that suit go? Puru sulo kan rondong, wo ilo ilo sama nero ni safari ni, akeno aketa nani ari le? The decision went in my favour. The dismissal and the termination were declared unconstitutional. They were, in fact, the angle from which I approached it was that they clearly amounted on unwarranted interference in the administration of justice. Between Bria Kuju be ya no masata. Ntele nata ganye akonyi nkono. Katubri ya alanya aninkulu Kenya jibe. Itataja kwe kulu kemyu nyaming. Iye tamandinu nyaming. Anin sarto manta, anin lua manta nyola. Wuda lirule ya sabu. Nte nata kango soto jemen keta tonyati. Nte ganye ita akonyi nto. So this provides clear judicial precedent of interference in the judicial system by way of unlawful dismissal. Certainly. Please let's go back to the contents of the letter. I'm particularly interested in what actually made the master of the high court, Usman Jame, laugh. Sila ngata leta ro njindo kumaka wame yalongo wale fururu ni njindo leta ro njindo kono Katu nga wengu sula baga la puru kalong Mune ya sabu kabri njindo masta membe nunje Bafula me usman jame Biringa ya damu raka leta ro njindo karandrong Aya borondi folo njindo karandrong ajeleta Lefta ka wale lolo He was of the opinion that the letter was too radical Atela jero mwenye tiko leta ro njindo kumaka ngulu menu bije Iketa kumaka mbamba ndingo leti he asked me to rewrite it. I did so. But when I brought it again, he was of the same opinion that it was too radical. Do you remember any particular words or phrases you used? Well, he was radical. radical. I can't remember anymore because the two drafts actually remain with him in his office. I'm sure he must have destroyed them. He was the one who finally toned down the letter. Um, and then uh, that was the version that we sent to the office of the president. 
eh hakilo tewolu mutanno la katu kumeri wolo mbari nyin kayti fulolu be ngamem fulo safe nata fulanja o mem falan safe wolu be labanta atele buloko no bari ate fangole nata safe ke afaye ay menki bitun kolu nata nata wole nyama after about 12 days brin til tan ni fulata mbita i was called by the confidential secretary of the secretary general nata nkumandi me yen kumandi wole mem marta kulolu la doku lalu be kunto ko noma te mo doku lale ti membe wala noma e ka fole secretary general i went to the office of the president ndata of president wala office auto state house state house and i was given a letter reinstating me back into the service of the judiciary e nata letter o dinna may murundi ka na place saima men keta kitindiro tamandi bundati who was the sg at that time you were the sg di mem secretary general to wado la this was wada to mo mem bi je ka fayna wada Do yes. you remember his first name? To follow do you remember? Ah, was it Mustafa Wada? Mustafa, yes. Ka fatale no Mustafa Wada. I remember before they gave me that letter in the intervening period he called me to say that um, I should send a second petition. Ngakilo bakang wo wuccew nyin kono jannin commandeur flanjango be kala wala nyim fonya ko ngata nga letter flanjango safe nyanta menkila uh but when the they start over the petition the issue that was raised by the attorney general then was that i was uh, i should have committed mr jobate for contempt of court rather than dismissing the case uh, amunta brite lu sita ko nyin kunna ya jube iko nyanta mr jobate dundila nun kito nyin kono le ka foko amunta te jututa kiti bunda nyin nale wole fisiata nun nga ko nyin mume o bayi did they tell you on what basis you should have cited him for contempt fo ya fo ne te be sujila dum dalila juma le kan mi ati ne bayi te ba fala ko ajuta kiti nyin nale ba well in the course of the argument from both sides um amunta karafulo be la kuma kan lo ni o lu be bondi ya jibe there were ethical issues which were observed on the side of the prosecution itindiro bunda la karola kolu bi jele men ya long ko keta ko tilindi silo leti men no jibe so part of it filtered in my ruling ko do luna ta finti ntela kango tari ngoko no nga kango men londi that was the reason why they said that uh, i could have adjourned the matter and dealt with the prosecutor uh by exercise of the powers of contempt rather than striking out or dismissing the matter itelo kono nyanta kito nyin denna lebe to nimmo yena nyaatili nyola me yalon ko nse nyin londino to mo ko ate juduta kiti bundala wole fisiata nun pour nde nga kito nyin bay nyami apart from the attorney general who else sat um on that petition ninga boda attorney general la jumala faram ko tag modi me yalon ko asita o petition nyin to kan I believe it was the military council and the attorney general was a member of the military council. Nga mira sojaro la council bunda nyin non de kat nga mira otumo attorney general fananda be o council bunda to le. And who was the attorney general at that time? O jamaano la jumala mun attorney general. This was Mr. Bite Musa. Musa Ngari Bite. E ka fayna Musa Ngari Bite. I and sent in the second petition explaining how why i could not have committed mr jobate for contempt nga kayti fulan yaw safi nga ki kay tandi dalilolu men ya kendi magna tilin mr jobate la ka foko ajutu rak ki to ni nale um and after a discussion on that by them you know then that was uh, how i was reinstated na lon ko britel fonglu sita ya ko jube ka chata ko la ina ta kamben dalilo kan pour ka je ko yenta murundi na do ko kan yenta it's interesting because at the beginning you told us that the um, effect of some of these decrees was that it suspended legislative as well as judicial powers and in this case it looks like the council is sitting over your case as an appellate court looking at the merits and the merits of the case nya bo warra baga ko mando ni yafa mole no njanko ni ni decree ni ngi keda loi len men ya lonko e loi la sarti buku ba ni ani loi kiti bunda ni na sembo ni hawlo be talale silen a fere jan juntala mol keda mol de me ya lonko wolle be siri tela ko woro e be la ko ni kiti ka mo sa fo no kiti bunda mul ngonam je fanadi be tela ko ni kiti ka yes that's absolutely true because the chief justice with all due respect to him and of uh, may pray for the almighty to give him uh, how do i put it 
Jannah uh, Firdaus, but the entire judicial system threw in the towel. They didn't want to take any single decision over the matter. So all the power was concentrated in the hands of Jami. Who was the chief justice at that time? It was Omar Al Ghali at the time. Utumo Omar Al Ghali atelom kolo nyato ngoti watembo. I must also say, uh, my sacking was the first interference. Many of them follow the kante bayi. Wele keta bulubula follow di by the executive. Nyatongo, msojari nyatongo la mansakunda imenta. The judiciary. Ke dabula wala ke bulubula kitendir bunda la doko lukolo. And it generated a lot of condemnation from the United Nations, from the Commonwealth, so many of these organizations. Ndun dunia la nyinga fubalu bena ata wakuo doya United Nations ana bunda kotengulu ibeya wo doya kafuko msojari wali apare msojari mansakunda ye bulubula kitibunda la doko lukolo. And I remember to. It gave Sadauda of blessed memory occasion to condemn the junta. He and said, "Now it's clear that we have we have we have gotten evidence that the junta is not sincere to whatever they are saying." And we come from an tala alhaji Sadauda banko nyatun kafolo alamani mani kafar kelaye atafanan nata doya roke akuola kusila ngasenea tele kai tandi molo lako ni soja roli mmfo kwe telebe mala nyaming wuning itelebe keka nyaming saying ifatatale. So. When the dust settled down, I was moved to Mansakongo. And before the dust settled down, did anything in particular happen to the then Attorney General who had um, made some suggestions as to what you should have done in the case? Well, by coincidence, the day I was reinstated, it was the day he was sacked. Was that coincidence or executive plan? Well, let me say by coincidence. It's strange that it was coincidence if his advice was disregarded, you were reinstated, and then he was booted out. That's how we saw events. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Ture. I believe it's now time for the break.